Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And in today's video, we'll be talking about how to stop procrastinating. So procrastination, we all do it. Um, it's easy to fall trapped to. And now that we're pretty much all studying from home and we're all stuck at home doing our classes online, it's easy to lose motivation. It's easy to lose focus. So I'm gonna give you seven productivity tips to help boost your workflow so that you can get more done. And without further ado, let's get into the first one. Tip number one, create your productivity workspace. So this should be the one area in your house that the sole function of what you do there is to get work done. So ideally you wouldn't really wanna have it in your room. You'd wanna have a separate space or a separate room because that's gonna minimize the amount of distractions around you. You want it to be distraction free. So I'd suggest if you're using a laptop or a computer to optimize your, your shortcuts and your applications so that you don't have any games on it, you don't have any distractions, that you're only using apps to help you with note taking or to help you with work. And that way when you go there, you're not gonna be tempted to open up different things. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna try minimize your temptation to use your phone. So for most of us, we're kind of like cyborgs where our smartphone's an extension of ourself. And it's very tempting to go pick it up, to look at your notifications, to reply to messages. So I find that by putting it on do not disturb or by just putting it face down so you don't see the notifications, that really helps. And if that still doesn't work, you can try do other things like um, using a time management app. So recently I've been using Forest which is this really cool app where you put a timer for say 25 or 50 minutes and it will run. But if you use your phone or if you go into a different application during that time, you'll kill your tree that you're growing. So in a sense, it forces you to, you know, keep focus so that you grow your little forest and then you look at it at the end of the day and you feel happy because you've not procrastinated and you've kept on top of things for the whole day. So that's really nice. And if all else fails, chuck your phone in a different room so that you definitely cannot get access to it and it's not within arm's reach. You also wanna make sure that this work environment, the study environment is cozy and it's nice to work in. No one wants to go to an office um, or, or a desk that is just dull and that's just mundane and boring. Um, all the libraries that I like studying at are usually bright, they're really airy, um, they're very vibrant. So you wanna choose an area in your house that has good natural lighting. You wanna make sure that your workspace is nice and clean. And I also have these little guys with me uh, to add a bit of character because otherwise the whole place would be very bland. But first thing before you do anything else is to get your productivity zone set up so that when you work, you're working efficiently and you're not getting distracted by all the other little things around you. Tip number two, plan your day the night beforehand. So before I sleep, I like to spend five to 10 minutes where I just make a mental note or I jot down how I'm gonna organize the following day. So I could organize it into blocks and I want to really know when I'm going to work, when I'm gonna have a lunch break, exercise, leisure time, that sort of thing. And what it really does is it helps you to not procrastinate because you're always knowing what's gonna happen next and you won't spend too much time on simple tasks, you won't get lost with what you're doing because I found that when you sort of play by ear and you just wake up and figure out what you're gonna do on the day that you'll spend say three hours on something that could have been done quicker or you won't allocate enough time to get a certain task done later in the day and by just having that preparation, you're mentally prepared for what you're going to expect and what you're gonna to wanna to get accomplished. I've also recently found that using objective lists where I'll write down some daily and weekly objectives, that really helps me to achieve certain goals. So I like to split them into three sort of categories. I have my university or medical school related um, objectives that I wanna do. I have more of my personal projects and then I'll have miscellaneous things like some errands that I might have to run. And in my daily objectives, I'll write down one or two things that I really wanna get accomplished today. So for my personal projects that I was working on, the main one was to film and edit this video. That's sort of what I wanted to get finished. And then in my medicine related ones, I put down to review a lecture from the previous week on neurodegenerative diseases. We were looking at Alzheimer's. And then for a miscellaneous task, I might have something else. I'm not, not sure what it is now, but usually I'll write something. And then for the weekly objectives, these are really handy because some things you just won't be able to do in one day, but you can pick away at them and chip away at them over the week. So these might be your reports, these might be your essays, your longer tasks that you wanna get done. And so I might set a certain assignment that I'll work on slowly throughout the week. And I find that the combination of having daily objectives and weekly objectives help you to put into context of what is available and what am I able to do and accomplish 
in this one day? And then what are some things that I'm working on that are gonna lead in throughout the week? So I find that just planning ahead, organizing your objectives and what you wanna get done, that's gonna make you more mentally prepared and just more efficient when you come to completing your tasks. Tip number three, develop a good morning routine. It doesn't really matter too much whether you're a super early morning waker, waking up at the crack of dawn, or if you like to sleep in a little bit longer, just as long as you arrange your day so that if you do sleep in a little bit longer, you will work a little bit later to make up for the lost time in the morning. Instead, what's really important is that you develop a morning ritual because that first 15 minutes or that first hour of the day, that's gonna set the tone and set the mood for the rest of it. If you wake up feeling super lazy and you hit that snooze button like 10 or 15 times, I know I've been there so many times in the past, not only are you gonna waste all that time spending an hour or two hours actually getting out of bed, you're gonna wake up feeling groggy, you're gonna wake up feeling lazy and you just won't wanna do anything. And by the time that you get into the swing of things and your brain's active and ready to actually start working, you've already wasted half the day. Instead, what I really suggest you doing is to engage in activities or to arrange your morning so that you're doing something that's mentally or physically stimulating. So for example, you could be doing things like exercising. You get out of bed, you go for a run, you do some push-ups next to your bed, you get that heart rate up because you've been resting for the last eight hours. Or something that's more mentally stimulating like reading a novel that you've been working on or um, journaling, reading up on the news, organizing your thoughts or just writing out what things you wanna accomplish or what topics that you're reviewing for the day. And by doing those things, you're gonna stimulate your body and energize your body so that you wanna get up and actually do things. Another thing I'd suggest is to get out of your pajamas. Before you go to your study or your workspace, don't wear your pajamas. You're gonna be in, you're just gonna feel lazy, you're just gonna not be in the right mood. So I find that if you dress like you're gonna to go to uni or dress like you're gonna to go to work, your brain's gonna follow suit and your brain's gonna think the same. Finally, another thing that I'd suggest is try not to check your phone in the morning if you can. I know that a lot, of, a lot of people use their phones as alarms, but apart from switching it off, you shouldn't really touch it. You don't wanna be checking social media. You don't wanna be checking through your messages and through your texts because that just means you'll be responding to all the things that you missed while you've been asleep. And that's a very reactive state. Or instead, what your morning ritual wants to try to do is to stimulate you and to make your own decisions and be more proactive so that you're controlling how your day's gonna go on. And also by delaying checking your phone, it can be something to look forward to on a later study break or something to catch up on to uh, at lunchtime. Two hours, three hours of missed messages aren't gonna kill you unless you're working in a high level job, of course, but I think you get my gist. It's all about getting into an energized state where you're focused, where you're wanting to get out and when you're looking forward to accomplishing things during the day. Tip number four, write a not to do list. Yes, you heard that correctly write a not to do list. All the things that you shouldn't be doing during the day. That could be things like using your phone for more than two hours or watching too many episodes of that Netflix series that you've been following. These are things that are not only gonna take time away from the tasks that you should be completing, but they're gonna be major sources of procrastination and by putting them on your not to do list, you'll prevent yourself from building bad habits later on. You can also put other things on your not to do list like tasks that you're needing to complete, but you shouldn't be doing right now. That probably doesn't make a lot of sense, so let me give you an example. Uh, say you have a research report that's due on Sunday, and it's currently a Thursday, but you spent the whole week working on it. You've been doing literature searches, you've been making all these edits, you've been frantically working on it, and it just doesn't seem to be going right. It's a bit chaotic, it's a bit messy, and you sort of reach like this writer's block where you don't know where to go. Instead of trying to bash it out again on another day, I'd suggest putting it on your not-to-do list. Not thinking about it, not worrying about it, because if you don't do it today, come back to it on the weekend, you'll come back to that research report, looking at it from a different angle, you'll think more clearly, you'll probably do a better job of it anyways. So don't start fretting and getting anxious over not completing it right now, it's not worth your time. Instead, you should be clearing up that uh, mental thought or that mental ram and Think about other things which you should be doing. So whenever you're working or you're studying and you find yourself getting lost in thoughts about like, hmm, should I be doing that other task or why am I getting bugged by this thought or this task? Ask yourself, is that on my not to do list? If it is, put it out of your head. It's not worth your time right now. If it isn't, think about whether it should be on your not to do list or whether or not you should actually be working on it. So I find this not to do list whole business 
It's really helpful in terms of preventing bad habits, but also clearing up that mental space so that you're not thinking about tasks that are irrelevant right now and that you're spending your time to actually focus on the tasks that you plan for the day. Tip number five, figuring out the why. I think if you take anything from this video, it has to be this point, that when you find yourself procrastinating, when you find yourself losing motivation, really got to put into context why you're putting in all this hard work in the first place. What's your internal motivation? What's your internal driver? Why are you doing it? For me, for medical school, I want to try really hard because I want to be a competent physician. I want to care for my patients as effectively as I can. If I'm lazy during med school, I'm not going to understand the content. I'm going to have lapses in my knowledge and I'm going to look like a bit of a fool when I come onto the wards. So whatever it may be, you'll have to figure out what are your own motivations? What are your long-term goals? The analogy that I can give is that you're a high-class chef. You've gone through pastry school. You've put in all this effort to prepare the six-course meal and you don't have a restaurant. You're not cooking for anybody. No one's going to eat the food that you're making. What's the purpose? There needs to be a long-term goal. And so that can be in different type of realms. That could be academically. Did you want to improve on your grades from last semester? That could be socially. Are you trying to get involved in more clubs and that sort of thing? Um, even personally, like take up a new skill. Maybe you, you'll thank yourself later for trying to learn guitar and now you can play at the campfire with your friends. So whatever it is, I like to set myself goals and I think you should too. And I like to set goals on a three monthly basis. So I find that three months is a good time because it's short enough where you can look at the goal and be like, this is attainable. I can grind for the next 90 days and I can change my behavior and make a difference. And um, that's why I think New Year's resolutions don't work too well because it's such a long period to, to make such a big behavioral change that it sort of just crumbles six months through and you give up. But three months is an attainable time period. I also think three months is long enough that if you look back onto your 90 day milestone, you'll be able to see improvements. You'll be able to see visible changes and they'll motivate you to set an improved or reiterated goal for the next three months. So whatever it is, when you're lacking motivation, when you're procrastinating and wondering, why am I doing this? Why is this so hard? This doesn't make sense. I don't understand why I'm trying to learn organic chemistry when I'm trying to do medicine. It, it, just, it just baffles me. So once you just sit down and figure out the why, the motivation to keep working will come. Tip number six, have a reset button. So even if you followed all these tips and you've gone online and you've done everything that you can to maximize your efficiency, your productivity, if you created the ultimate study space, you created the ultimate study plan, Sometimes there'll be days, there'll be afternoons where you're just not feeling it. You don't feel like doing any work, you're pretty bummed, your brain's fried, you just hit this afternoon low and you don't want to do anything more. In these circumstances, you need to know how to reset yourself, how to re-energize, how to get back on track. And there's a bunch of things that I like to do when I feel like this. Usually I feel the most unproductive about mid-afternoon, about three o'clock. I'm, I'm feeling pretty tired, I don't feel like doing much. So either I'll give myself an hour of just relaxing leisure time, I'll try to cook some meals or I'll have something to eat, I'll go for a run, go for a jog. And alternately I've been trying this new thing, seeing that we're all at home, um, I'll Skype call some friends and we'll do some group study. So having them on a call, having them around, we can either talk through past questions, bounce ideas off each other, or at least just have someone else there that's holding us accountable if we're slacking off. So whatever it is, whatever your technique is, you need to find a way to bounce back from tiredness, um, bounce back from just not feeling like doing anything. And for many people, um, that can mean having a coffee break or a tea break timed when you're feeling low to give you that little kick to finish off that report or to finish off that assignment, whatever it is. But sometimes, no matter how hard you try, you're just not feeling it and you just have to know when to call it quits. When to have a rest, have a break, your brain's fried and to plan effectively for the next day. So for the final tip, tip number seven is to reward yourself. At the end of the day, plan something fun, plan something interesting to do so that you're looking forward to finishing or you're looking forward to getting a task done. I like to be procrastination because instead of just lounging around and putting it off, think about the fact that if you started now, if you complete your task and you attach a reward to it, you're gonna to get to your reward way quicker and feel way better about yourself because you were productive, you got things done and now you're reaping the rewards of it. How I think of it is that the reason why we're productive or we're efficient is not just to learn more content or to get more tasks completed, but it's to get it done quicker so that we free up the time to do the simple things that we enjoy, like spending time with our family or having some alone leisure time to binge through YouTube videos or binge through Netflix. 
So whatever it is, whether that be watching a movie or playing video games, um, special shout out to uh, Drawful 2. It's a good game. Uh, Jackbox Games is really fun to play with your mates, especially in this quarantine time that we're all stuck in our rooms, Zoom calling or Skype calling. But whatever it is, if you're Skype calling with your mates, if you're watching a movie, if you're having some snacks, plan something ahead, plan something interesting so that you're looking forward to the end of the day instead of just studying for the sake of studying and then it becomes this mundane cycle of like, what's the point? So we're productive because we want to free up time to do the things that we enjoy and to spend time with those that we love. All right, guys, well, that's all the tips that I have for you today. I hope you found them useful. I hope they give you motivation to be procrastination, to get more work done. I know it's been a pretty difficult situation for a lot of us with all our classes being changed, being put online, with work schedules being rearranged and that sort of thing. But I hope you guys are adjusting. I hope you guys are keeping safe, keeping healthy. And I'd love to hear if you guys have any productivity tips or productivity advice to keep you motivated, especially during this home time. So comment them down below. I'd love to hear them and I'm sure other people would too. And if you enjoyed the video, can you please smash that like button and subscribe to see more content like this. I have plenty more videos on my channel, so definitely go check out those. But thanks so much for making it to the end. Thanks for watching. And until next time, this was Sebastian. Stay sharp.